In 1867, a 16-year-old boy left his father's farm, seeking something he craved ever since he could remember. This boy would later own a watch company that broke every law imaginable in watchmaking and in business, all while competing with billion-dollar industry giants from his little farmhouse. Fast forward one or two centuries, this boy, along with his fellow farmer friend, is etched in history as one of the most innovative watchmakers of all time and shaped the way we see the world. This is the story of Audemars Piguet. In the deep farmland of Switzerland, there were two young boys who didn't know anything but their lives on the farm. When they grew up, they both dared to venture outside the farm, going their own separate ways. And in 1874, the now two young men in their 20s crossed paths once more back in their hometown. It was like no time had passed at all. Their names, Jules-Louis Audemars and Edward Auguste Piguet. And they had a secret weapon that would lead them to conquer the watchmaking industry for centuries to come. Have you ever wondered why so many world-famous watch brands come from Switzerland? Rolex, Tag Heuer, Omega, and of course, Audemars Piguet? It all started at the end of the 18th century. Swiss farmers dedicated their days to craft watches during the long winter months. They transformed their farmhouses into tiny studios just so they could make watches. A tight-knit network of watchmaker families grew, and they eventually gave birth to some of the most complicated mechanisms ever produced. This was the secret of Audemars Piguet's outstanding watchmaking. They were a product of generations of innovation. When Audemars and Piguet returned to their hometown, Jules-Louis Audemars had just finished watchmaking school as a top student. It was clear that Jules-Louis had something special going on, and his friend, Edward Auguste Piguet, thought they could make some money out of it. One year after their reconnection, they decided to go into business together. Little did they know, their namesake brand would become one of the top companies of all time. As the technical maestro, Audemars headed up production, supervised product development, and manufactured the raw components for their early timepieces. Piguet served as the master watchmaker, performing the final regulation on the watches. He carefully inspected each finished component, made adjustments, and brought the watches to life. But later, as the company grew and evolved, Piguet discovered his passion for the business that made it possible for AP to reach stars. It's just like the founder of Rolex said, only great marketing is needed to make a company successful, Hans Wilsdorf. And that's exactly what Piguet made his name in, sales, marketing, and management. Turns out the farmer boy couldn't just sell milk to a cow, he could sell a cow a leather jacket and shoes to match. They set up their first workshop right in the farmer village they grew up. The timing of this business venture was, to be honest, not great. Swiss watchmaking was evolving from a cottage industry that gave poor farmers extra income during the winter season into the industry that a nation would build its reputation on. Swiss watch giants started setting up mass production and the prospects for two young Swiss watchmakers trying to make it were getting slimmer by the day but they had an ace up their sleeve, the incredible watchmaking of Jules-Louis Audemars. If he'd been an average or even a great watchmaker, the business would have fallen on its backside. But Jules could do what no machine or factory could do, make incredible, high-complication watches to a level that still baffles people today. And in 1892, Jules created something extraordinary. He made the world's first mini-repeater in a wristwatch. If you don't know, a mini-repeater is a watch with a slide. You slide the slide, and it has different chimes to let you know the hours, quarter hours, and minutes. In 1892, this was an incredible feat of watchmaking, because to make this watch, not only did you need the energy to run the watch accurately, but you also needed all the energy to hammer the two gongs on the side. And you needed all the different tones and musical elements to be heard exquisitely. It was programmed to play 720 sound sequences, one for each minute of the 12 hours displayed on the watch. But, after this grand invention, Audemars Piguet didn't even get to sell their watch to the public, because back then, the name Audemars Piguet meant nothing. It didn't mean quality, it didn't mean costly, and it certainly didn't mean a groundbreaking minute repeater. Audemars Piguet operated as the original manufacturer to other watch brands. That was their only option. They were still kids, after all, making some of the most complicated, riskiest movements in the world. That's why in 1892, Omega shocked the world and came out with the world's first minute repeater wristwatch, not Audemars Piguet. 
To this day, the watch sits inside an Omega museum. But this amazing innovation allowed AP to get noticed by some of the biggest watch brands around the world, and Jules never stopped making high complication movements, whilst Eddie sold them around the world, opening up offices in Geneva, London, Berlin, Paris and New York in just a few short decades. And AP was making movements for the biggest and best brands in existence. Bulgari, Cartier, Tiffany, they all saw the mastery of this up-and-coming watchmaker and wanted it for themselves. And it wasn't until the turn of the century they could finally sell to the public, buying cases and dials and assembling their own watches from their hometown workshop. Things are a little different these days, but perhaps not as different as you might think. Today, Audemars Piguet are a technical masterclass, bringing the best of everything into one watch. They're an industry giant with 2,000 people on payroll. Contrast that to the simple little farmhouse Edward and Jules started out in. It's night and day, and as the years and decades wore on, they stayed in their little farming village of Les Brassus. In 1918 and 1919, the pair passed away within a year of each other, and the business was handed down to their sons, Paul Louis Audemars and Paul Edward Piguet. Just think about those naming choices for a second. The business remained in very capable hands and carried the bond of their fathers, and they never left their home village. The company remained right where it was in Le Brassou, employing less than 30 people all the way until 1950. Not only did they break the laws of watchmaking, but they broke the laws on how to build and run a billion-dollar business. Today, they have a shiny new headquarters, but still located in Le Brassou, and the chair of the board is one Jasmine Audemars, granddaughter of Jules. Together, the two sons continued to carry on the family tradition of mind-boggling innovation. Time after time, they proved that the impossible was actually possible. In the early 1920s, they made the first Jump Pocket Watch, a watch that had a digital dial that switched on every hour, instantly. Once again, another crazy feat of engineering for the time, because you needed a brake that actually stops the disc and then transfers over the power. A few years down the road, they made the world's thinnest pocket watch caliber, and in 1934, they made the world's first skeletonized wristwatch, allowing all the intricate moving parts to be seen beneath the dial. It's a style of watch that continues today. It's heavily imitated, but still mastered only by AP. In 1946, they came out with the world's thinnest wristwatch, and in the 50s, the first wristwatch with a perpetual calendar. But in 1972, they launched one of the most iconic watch designs of all time. It'd be the one model that would define the rest of Audemars Piguet's history. It was the Royal Oak. It came out when most wristwatches were made on leather, especially for it to be considered a nice watch. There'd been a few watches on a metal bracelet, but the Royal Oak was the first watch on an integrated metal bracelet, flush with the case seemingly as one. And it was a luxury watch. Nobody thought steel and luxury could work together, and at the time, people thought it was totally backwards. But the Royal Oak and Audemars Piguet redefined the industry and created a whole new subset of watches. They were handmade and beautiful, but you could wear it every day and not worry about its delicateness. Like Royal Oak itself, a strong tree or ship made to withstand any challenge in front of it, but AP wanted to take it one step further. They later created Royal Oak Offshore, a luxury, high-end watch in the sports fashion realm, something that most brands stayed far away from. Brands at this time want to stay clean, classy, and go for the ultra-luxury, ultra-refined class. But AP was not afraid to serve people who wanted nice things, but also enjoy them. People who weren't afraid to spend and join the club, and wanted to take their watch anywhere, be it yachting in Ibiza or driving Ferrari in Milan. They wanted to have fun, and AP made sure they could, because Audemars Piguet isn't a brand that's there for people who sit in the finest dining rooms. They're there for the adventure. And in the pursuit of adventure, nothing can stop you.